anyone ever created their own machinima for language teaching? I mean, some of you said they had, but others? Okay, so Greta said she had only made a display. Right. No idea or not working for me. So I have no uh, clue how the stream this is going to work. Somebody wrote, not for language, but displays I had created in Second Life and in Real Life Home. That's so far uh, the responses. My avatar comes to my real life home. How nice. Okay, so we actually assumed that not everybody had uh, actually um, is familiar with or has used machinima. So we summarized uh, the essentials of what machinima is and why film in virtual worlds on this slide here. So machinima is a technique for making videos or films from 3D worlds or 3D virtual spaces using screen capture programs and video editing software. And in Machinima, the virtual world, its inhabitants and all their actions are captured on film. Machinima allow people to document their activities and experiences in virtual worlds. So, why teach in 3D worlds? I've often found that people in the real world have no idea what teaching in virtual worlds would be like, what the benefit, what, what kind of benefits it has compared to real life teaching and how virtual worlds can enhance real life teaching. I therefore devoted my first machinima I ever created which was earlier this year, to the subject matter, why teach in 3D worlds? This machinima combines real life footage, an interview with Gehil de Meisel Eckert, who is also presenting at this conference here on Skype, and then interviews and discussions in world, as well as little teaching scenarios in a boutique, buying clothes and selling, so let's just watch the machinima bearing in mind how this machinima could help to promote teaching in virtual worlds. And I see that Carol has just um, posted the link in the chat. And uh, please have a look in your browser. Put it in your browser and have a look at the film. It's about 11 uh, minutes long.
Hello. Wonderful. Okay, so um, the question we would like to ask now is, would you agree on the advantages of learning in virtual worlds highlighted by Gerhilde, Carol and others, or anything you would like to add to the statements. There's quite a bad background humming. I don't know if you can hear it, if the sound is okay at your ends. It's not too bad for me. Okay. So, Alina absolutely agrees 
and uh, Greta obviously reacts to the sound, which is fine. But uh, do you agree uh, also to what uh, Gehilde Carroll and others uh, said? I mean, you didn't hear, you have no chance to hear uh, Carroll's voice, but you could hear it in the chat. You can, you can now. Ah, then it's you with a big humming sound in the background. Okay. Ah, okay. Switch, only me. switch me off then. Um, it's okay Vienna. now. It's okay now, I suppose. It's, it's better now, yeah. So, the second question, um, Carol, would you like to read it? <laughs> would you agree with Gerhild and, uh, that the virtual environment should be standard in, in real life classes? And if so, why, or if not, why not? In the web, this is what Alfonso says. So, uh, if I understand Alfonso correctly, he thinks that it should be used on the web and... Okay, uh, I, I did them. Um I did paste it once, but let me paste it again. So it's what you agree with Gehilde that virtual environment should be standard in real li in the real life class. And why or why not? Uh, you're hearing from the web page. Um, you, you haven't finished watching it. Is that right? There's a bit of delay. Okay. Have you got the question? Okay, uh, Greta uh, Scribe says, virtual world experience is great for language learning. And Abram uh, James says, I think many instructors use video, but for some reason might be uncomfortable with machinima. And why would they be uncomfortable with machinima? Uh, James, could you explore that a little? Okay, uh, James <laughs> says, especially making it, okay? And Greta says, I speak French. Also, for example, uh, I love participating to haiku poetry writing. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. And also, Second Life reinforced my learning Italian, said Greta. Okay. Okay, anything else? So, uh, I guess we could uh, move <laughs> on. You made lots of friends. Yeah, that sounds great, Greta. Right. I think, uh, Carol, we should skip, um, we, we should um, finish that um, part now and skip the next, um, the, the next video with... Okay. And go on, you know, the vex next video actually was one, and you could always still look it up. Uh, it was, it's never too late to learn uh, something new. And this was a promotional video, uh, 90, um, 90 seconds video um, that was part created for a competition at TechSoup 2013 digital storytelling and it even won an award yeah and it was created to encourage especially older people or people with disabilities uh, who are not able to go to places or travel around and are bound to stay in their home to 
uh, you know, to, to get involved in virtual worlds and maybe learn a language or visit other places in world and meet people to talk to. Like Greta just said, you know, you make lots of friends. And in virtual worlds, your avatar does not show unless you wish to do so age or impairments. And I think the video captures some basic ideas of machinima and um, virtual worlds, but um, we don't need to watch it right now. You can do it at your leisure. The next part, uh, what has become very an very interesting, uh, important part of our machinima uh, production, Carol and my machinima production, that was that we have developed a great selection of machinima for language learning, of which we will share a few samples in a minute. We categorized the machinima we produced under specific genres. I hope I didn't mispronounce it this time. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the first one is informative. Yeah, it took me a long time. Uh, but Carol is a good teacher. So <laughs> the first one is informative, like the one we showed you, why teach in 3D worlds. Then uh, narratives. We heard um, this mentioned in the previous um, presentation. So storytelling and humor, including riddles and jokes. He is specifically created for children. Then grammar is always a popular important point, dealing with specific areas like phrasal verbs or present tense and idioms and uh, others. And Carol has produced a whole set of idioms like cat idioms, dog idioms, horse idioms and others of which we will share the dog idioms with you. Then. The other one is instructions, like how to get started with Second Life and so on. Uh, we haven't, po we haven't uh, included a um, sample of this, but uh, there are s resources where you can find them. And um, yeah, and then role plays, such as the shopping you saw in the first video and a few others that we will show you later and documentaries, which would include a recording of the session, for example. Um, yeah, of course, we will not be able to share all the examples of our productions, but you'll find a good, uh, good overview of the Rainbow Schneider productions on the CSI Train website if you are interested. Thank you, Carol or under the YouTube channels under Carol Rainbow or Crystal Schneider. And you also find a collection of German videos that can be viewed on my German website. Now, it's been said elsewhere um, how important characters, avatars is, and of course, specifically, uh, when you uh, create machinima, depending on the roles and avatars required for different scenarios, you choose your avatar accordingly. The little boy um, with a bottle of juice and the sandwich was used for a circus scene waiting outside to get in and then in another role in a circus juggling with balls and riding a one-wheel bike. As the slide shows, you can also animate made your avatar uh, so that you can give somebody a piggyback or change your avatar according to the place, period or requirements. If you wish to visit Berlin in the 20s, you can only enter it if you wear appropriate clothing so of that period. You can see that in the picture on the bottom right. Um, okay, so uh, the picture on the top right uh, is a funny one that was taken in Paris of uh, 1900 and a funny addition in this scene is a dog which is animated to pee against a lamppost. It looks pretty <laughs> realistic when you are in world and the picture in the middle with it, um, yeah, um, the picture in the middle with the donut seats was taken at a friend's house where we tried 
out different avatars to set up a new scene. And one can be seen in the background. It's actually Carol playing a fairy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any, any comments so far? Everything clear so far? Okay. Okay. So, meeting an old friend. I mean, uh, here, um, you, th this is a typical sample for the choice of characters uh, that can be found uh, in the following sketch where Carol and I used uh, the avatars shown on the slide. And the sketch is about two old ladies who meet in the library thinking they know each other, exchanging private details only to find out in the end that they actually have never met. So um, when you watch this video, you don't have to watch the whole video, but when you watch it, bear in mind for which level you would use such a video and uh, it would be suitable and which language functions could be practiced with the sketches, with the sketch before or after, okay? So this is the link and I will add the questions. Yeah, I'll do it. I've got them here. You will do it? Thank you, Carol. So, for which level would such videos be suitable and which language functions should be practiced with a sketch before or after? So I think we could stop it here uh, watching this video because I think you have a general idea, right? So the question Carol posted, for which level would such video be suitable, do you think? I mean, it can be transferred into any language. Uh, we have uh, produced it in German, could be done in French, Spanish, Chinese, I suppose. Are you still with us? They're all watching the film. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Okay. A two, yes, I agree, Alfonso. Yeah. Intermediate, gosh. You could Why? use it with intermediate, but it probably is a, a little bit easy for intermediate students, I would think. <laughs> So what about A2 level, B1 level? I mean, yeah, if you look at it, they are very, very simple questions. That it, It's all simple questions and about what you do, what your job is, who your husband is. <laughs>
Yes, Elena. Sorry. Sorry, so, sorry Carol. <laughs> I was Go just ahead. going to say, I might use it for B1 students that were lacking in confidence because it should be easy enough for them to cope with fairly easily and so it should build confidence. So yes, as a confidence builder for more advanced students, but I think it's ideally placed at A2, isn't it? I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the language functions, any ideas? Carol, you are always full of brilliant ideas. <laughs> <laughs> language functions. I mean, somebody must know the language functions. <laughs> How to? <laughs> we've, we've got greetings, yes, greetings, asking questions, socialising. Um, we've got past tense, haven't we? Lots of past tense work in there. Yeah, and the past of B, the past tense of B, yeah. Yeah. Okay, happy with that? Okay, then um, shall we move on? Move on, yes. <laughs> so we found that learning grammar can be motivating and enjoyable when shown in a film and in context. And um, in this previous film, it was asking questions and the use of simple past with a verb to be. Phrasal verbs always seem a bit tricky to translate into another language, and so we started with phrasal with the phrasal verb run, where we put different meanings of the phrasal verb into context and created little scenarios, like um, with um, the verb run. We we could start with Carol. Could you you have already put it in there? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what grammar, grammar is fun. fun. Yeah, <laughs> can be great. Be fun. <laughs> yeah. So we have a look at how funny just phrasal verbs can be, but just at the beginning. Don't please don't look at the whole film. going to call everybody back. <laughs> okay. Come back. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you got a, an idea about it. We also, as I said, produced a video with the phrasal verb get and then produced another one with a story. I think that was the most important thing we learned, wasn't it? That um, that the phrasal verbs were not as good on their own as when we put them into a story context. So uh, I lost. Uh, I lost voice. Uh, you're back now. Have you got voice? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing okay. you back. Okay. Okay, great. Thank I can you. hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, so very good. Um, the survival strategy has uh, worked. 
Well, uh, so it's a whole whole uh, thing of Sarah's life uh, from morning to night. And the students, really, the feedback we got from students was that they liked the verbs and context best because they could follow this whole story and, uh, you know, they were not episodes and they learned the uh, phrasal verbs uh, just on the way. And uh, there's a lot of activities that can follow such um, such a film in the classroom. Okay. Any any questions? No. Okay. So um, this was the uh, grammar part, and then uh, it, there is the fun part. We had great fun in producing riddles and jokes for children, and created four videos and four short. Uh, jokes each. Uh, let's just share this one and uh, look the four, four first ones, okay? Uh, the question is when and where you show the videos. Uh, Greta just asked, do students just watch videos or also you engage them uh, for in-world experience? I mean, there are many uh, possibilities to use them. Uh, the students um, might first watch a scene and then uh, play the scene, scene uh, themselves. And I think we have a very good example uh, of that one. Um, which I think, uh, Carol, if you don't mind, we could uh, switch over to uh, because of time management reasons. What do you think? The role play at the airport? Okay, I can post that now. Yes, there's, this is one that um, we used <laughs> for for students to actually create. Yes, this was actually uh, created at um, the last conference of Virtual uh, World's Best Practice in Education. And uh, there we created an airport scene. Have you got this airport scene, Carol? Yeah, it's there. Yes, yeah, so that's the one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very short, so you can have a look at the full airport scene there. That's slide 13. Okay. So it's very short, and um, I've come to the conclusion tickets, to uh, produce more sure, and more sure. such short uh, videos because uh, students usually feel very yes, inspired. So what we did and then what the was bags? we had students luggage? listen to it's the whole um, uh, to, to the whole to scene or not listen. We showed oh, it with oh, speech no. bubbles, yes, and, and the students created the that is a little dialogue. So you have to go it. to counter so 31 the next step to pay 15 then euros be, for any um, extra kilograms. To, um, the, the next step would then be to have the students perform and then make a new machinima of what the students' sentences were. Okay? Shall we read the second part so that it... Yeah, no problem. Okay, so in this scenario, it was a checking in, and we had two passengers and an airline steward. So I'll start by reading the steward's part. Good morning, ladies. May I see your tickets, please? Somebody has disappeared. Can you hear me, Carol? I can. I can hear you, Letty. Anyway, um, if Carol cannot hear me, it's the scenario is 
that the steward says, hello, ladies, how can I help you? And the passenger says, hello, we would like to buy tickets and we hope that you can help us. So where would you like to travel to? Uh, somewhere where there's a nice beach and sunshine. Would you prefer Asia or European country? Europe would be better. Yeah. Okay. What about Greece? Where they have lovely beaches and good wine. Ah, yeah, that sounds good. So when do you want to travel? <laughs> Today? Okay. We have seats left on a flight leaving at 6 p.m. Would you like to take them? Yeah, that would be great. I mean, this is fantastic. And that that was a uh, real-life class students uh, from um, Carol's class. So uh, I think that was really good. Okay. Another way of using machinima is very powerful in giving students the opportunity opportunity to keep evidence of their creations or activities in a role play and provide food for thought and discussion afterwards. Reti, are you there? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I can't hear Letty. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, well, here's a film that uh, this is Crystal, this is Letty's German class, and they all did um, a, f a video. And uh, Crystal Letty responded to the students, telling them what they'd done well and what they hadn't done so well, and talked about then how things could be mistake. improved. It's the avatar. Ah, she's back. The positive effect is that through machinima, students can monitor their avatar progress and hence their own. taken from my uh, virtual online course. So the steps are no Letty. Oh dear. Um, can you show uh, the film, uh, Carol? And can you go on? This is a bit distracting. If people can hear you, um, I'm talking about the five steps and then show the film. Okay? Are you okay, Carol? Okay, yes. The five steps, everybody. <laughs> the steps are as follows. So step one, students receive a note card with a scenario and different roles, and they familiarize themselves with the roles. They can either learn the roles by heart, or they can read the text out loud, whichever is best for them. The second step is students perform, and their performance is recorded. So in this bit, this is a typical language lesson, isn't it? Role play in a class. The recording, though, is edited, and uh, Letty usually integrates the dialogues in speech bubbles afterwards, as you can see in the video, and then adds some explanations about new words and a correction of intonation at the end of the video. The step four is the analysis of students' performance by students, so peer assessment. And step five possibly a new recording of the scene with different roles to reinforce the learning. And then the video is here so that you can actually watch it. And while you're watching it, think about these two questions. How do you think students in a real-life classroom would benefit from machinima performed by non-native speakers? And in 
What way could machinima produced by students serve as a model in your classroom? Okay, so uh, Lea writes she thinks it's a good idea because it reinforces the activity and learning and she likes the feedback uh, via chat bubbles and the peer assessment. So um, they could identify and correct mistakes, James Abraham says, and Lea says the students created content rich and vibrant points. Uh, out natural behavior and reinforces learning, adds humor to the experience. Mm -hmm. Perfect points, wonderful. And Jens says, no native speakers. It gives them a way to listen to others. That's an interesting point, Jens. Mm -hmm. That's uh, actually, that's a very, very important one in my job because I teach mostly uh, airline pilots or um, air traffic controllers and very often they're word perfect in English, but very often they can't understand each other because a Vietnamese air traffic controller might be speaking to a Spanish pilot, a Spanish pilot might be speaking to a Chinese uh, medical person if they need some support. And by the time you've got the, the, the interplay with very, very strong accents and different cultural ways of speaking, for example, when the Vietnamese leave off all the endings of words, it's very, very hard to understand the English. So I find my students understand me perfectly because I'm a native speaker. And if I'm teaching, I speak very slowly and clearly, not gabbling like I am now. But they do have real problems understanding each other. Yeah, that's a good point also. It gives a way of, um, uh, of Lear. It's a community thinking, yeah. Um, I think we have kind of uh, run <laughs> out of time. Time, yes, we have. Yes, um, but it doesn't matter because um, you can always come back to uh, the films um, on our YouTube channels and on our website. So um, we hope to have given you some ideas and uh, would like to share a last question uh, with you. Um, what, uh, what you think uh, would be or was missing or uh, would you love to have as an extra category which we haven't covered in the list of machinima? Uh, to be produced. <laughs> so Jan says students love making real life films and here in virtual environments gives them a new media. They are less shy, uh, I find, in uh, um, in virtual environments than they often are in real life, at least when you work with adults. It also gives them the, um, the environment, doesn't it? You book into a hotel, but you go to a real hotel and book in, in a virtual yeah. world, of course. Mm -hmm. Or you go to an L, you fly an aeroplane in a virtual world, or you... <laughs> go to a restaurant and order food, go to the mm -hmm. bar and buy a drink. I mean, it gives you the situation, the environment. And uh, Lear um, posted a very interesting question and she asked the, uh, for activity and content or for technology use um, 
uh, for making producing machinima. I mean, uh, neither uh, Carol or I would uh, say that we are uh, experts in making machinima from the uh, technical side. There are others much better. Uh, I reckon for my machinimas than uh, we are, but or I am. But uh, I think for us, it's the most important is the content, the fun, and the teaching bit. Yes. Yes, definitely. That's the big thing, isn't it? It's not yeah. the person making mistakes or doing silly things. It's um, it's an avatar. Yes, Lear writes here, separation of self and freedom of expression. That is absolutely right. And that's what's so empowering, right. Mm -hmm. You do need a little technology. You do need something like Fraps Camtasia or Windows Movie Maker. Something that'll, um, well, Fraps or Jing or one of the screencast programs that'll take the video and then a, a, a bit of editing software like Camtasia or, or Windows Movie Maker. But there's lots of things that are free, loads of things that are free. Yes, of course, Jens, that's right. We should use uh, all technic um, techniques and technical resources that are uh, possible and that are free, <laughs> but uh, that don't kill or overwhelm people, they are just a tool to make something work. Yes, that's in Camtasia. But you can also do that, in, oops, I've spotted it wrong. Sorry about that. Camtasia. Um, you can yeah. also add them and, in uh, uh, another Windows another uh, very good thing in Camtasia is uh, which uh, could you just put the link in, uh, Carol? That's the last link people could uh, have a look at if they want to. That is um, that people can um, uh, that that you can put quizzes in, and that is fantastic. Ah. I think that's a real fantastic quizzes. thing. That is. And that's quizzes. That's a quiz. Yes. Yeah, that's on screencast. It it does not upload to uh, YouTube. You have to use the Camtasia screencast with it. But I think it's a fantastic tool, and uh, you can learn German. Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> that was the dog idioms that we were going to look at, and then we were doing the narrative in the owl and the pussycat. <laughs> Just take a copy of them, folks. And then we were going to look at materials, teaching resources that we'd made to go with just... Ah, you can put questions on top of YouTube. In the quiz format, James, is that? Or is that just literally a question and then... Um, this has feedback, the questions and answers that you get a list of feedbacks in there. And can you do uh -huh. that on... YouTube as well. We'll investigate. We yeah. will investigate that one. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think our time is up, isn't it? Our time is well and truly up. We've run over. It's almost time for the next presentation, so we had better close. <laughs> Thank you for a great audience. You were wonderful, bearing Thanks. with all the hiccups. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> Sorry about our, yes, no sound, yeah. too much sound, double sound, echoed sound. <laughs> Sorry about all okay. those things. <laughs> Cheers. Thank Thanks you, Livy and Carol. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, just remind our audience here, you can see what's coming up in the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. So in this room, the next session won't be until 12.30, uh, streaming and content creation for the 3D environment with Janine Scarborough. Thank you again to our speakers and the audience. We'll be now taking a break for lunch, followed by the afternoon keynote speakers. Thank you. I'm taking a break to take my dogs a walk. <laughs> Okay, shall we uh, meet again later on after yes. the break?